Hey everyone, it's Matty231 here, and I'm showing you today the interior and some of the features of the 221 S-Class Mercedes. I've got a uh, V12 S600, but a lot of the interior is similar throughout the other models as well, so hopefully this helps. When I was looking for my first, um, and this is my first 221, I was struggling to find um, some more in-depth videos about the interior and some of the features, especially in this version, which is the long wheelbase and the uh, rear comfort seats. So we'll have a look through and um, get started. Excuse my garage guys, it's a bit messy at the moment. Um, but basically, this model here was uh, equipped um, with uh, fucking, what do you call it? Excuse my garage guys, it's a bit of a mess here. Um, but this model here is equipped with um, the keyless go system. So basically you lock it, unlock it, um, as most of the newer models have. This is a 2007, don't forget. So let's hop in. Now the nice thing about the 221, um, which I, this is the only car, only Merc I've noticed it in, I've had a C63 and a C63 and I've also got out the back there a, a 211 E5, uh, E550, but the, every time you hop into this car, it's a bit of a weird thing, but it smells nice, it's got that nice sort of fresh brand new leather smell still, even though it's a 12 year old car, um, and I sort of attribute that to the extensive amount of leather used in the car. Um, there's not really many hard surfaces that you can touch in this car, literally everything. Oh, drop the bloody camera. Literally everything is um, very, uh, very soft to touch. It's all really high quality materials, leather, leather, wood. Um, this is sort of like a coated vinyl leather down here again. Again, this is sort of like a vinyl-y sort of material. Um, I'm tossing up between aluminium and plastic buttons. I believe they're aluminium. The back ones here, um, those are definitely aluminium. I've given them a good... I had to replace one of them actually, and it was quite expensive, but that's definitely aluminium. So the first thing when you hop into the S-Class, this model's got the lovely uh, polished wood uh, steering wheel. A bit old school, you know, a bit old man looking, but I like it. Um, and it just pol it polishes up lovely. So does the rest of the trim. As you can see, this model, and I think most of the 221s, at least the S500s and 600s, have the ambient lighting. My um, 2013 E63, which I made a video on about this time last year, if you watched that video, um, that also had ambient lighting. This one doesn't have changeable colours though, this is just this, uh, I believe this colour is called Solar. If I'm correct, I might be wrong, but I think it's Solar. Um, anyway, in this car here we've equipped, we've got equipped with night vision. We've got the headlight washers and all the normal bits and pieces on the st uh, the light system. So if I push the keyless go button, turns on the ignition, brings up the odometer, and we uh, turn the car on. Well, we don't turn it on, but we just fire it up into this on position. Oh, great, need to top up the coolant a bit. Cool, okay, that's good to know. Um, if we flick this little night vision button here, it'll switch over to night vision. So, that's cool, and I can just flick out of that again. Okay, thank you. That's the first time I've seen that, that's good to know. Um, and yeah, everything else in this car is pretty much, all the other, all the other gauges, sorry, are just manual conventional gauges. They look a little bit boring. To be honest, I don't really see the purpose for the screen, especially if you don't have night vision assist. Um, but the night vision system, I think, works quite good in areas where you're driving slowly so in New Zealand here it's 50 kilometers an hour areas or I think in America it's like 30 miles per hour that's when it's actually best utilized I don't believe it's utilized or any benefit at speeds over 60 or 100 kilometers an hour because you're going so fast the infrared light doesn't get far enough to illuminate that far ahead of you um, but down down slowly like through my street here it's nice and uh, illuminates quite well um, and it does illuminate a lot more than the headlights do when you're driving slowly and you can see. So moving down here, the S600 has a um, a polished or leather wrapped, uh, sorry not leather wrapped, yeah polished wood trim or if you've got like the S65 it'll have carbon fibre in some of them. Then you've got a nice sort of piano black finished uh, keypad here and you can use this to dial. You've also got your seat controls, sport, manual and comfort. You've got your volume and uh, settings for the uh, command system. And you've got a nice, I don't know if you can hear that guys, 
nice metal, big, thick, heavy metal um, spindle thing, sort of like an iDrive and a BMW would be, but um, definitely more easy to use. Then you've got all the buttons here, you've got your seat controls here, if I click seat, you'll see here you can just toggle through all the seat controls on both driver and passenger, and it really is actually amazing. This is probably one of the best, well, the most interesting features. It's You can just move everything here, bolsters by your legs. It really, you can customize it so much to suit how you want. Now, this is um, a, you've got your center rest here. Opens up both sides, it's quite cool. You've probably seen that before a hundred times. Open this up here, you've got a cool box. Put a few bits and pieces in here. This car unfortunately has no aux, no Bluetooth, uh, A2DP, anything like that unfortunately, but that's all right. I've just got CDs jamming at the moment. Um, now, if we look up here guys, so this car has the panoramic sunroof. And also just while you probably notice, it's got nice Alcantara Dynamica headliner, which is in a dark, uh, like a sort of dark gray black uh, trim. And it really, I've always wanted a car with Dynamica and none of my cars have ever had it, which is a bit disappointing. So um, I'm, I'm grateful to finally have it. Now, <clears throat> if we see up here, we've got the standard controls. We've got this button here. Now this button's on the, uh, the panoramic sunroof. This controls the actual blind in the back for the passengers in the black. Now the back passengers can also control it themselves. Um, and they can actually control back and forward, whereas this is literally like a toggle. You push it, it'll open all the way up, and then you push it again, it closes all the way back again. Um, down here, you can program this button. I've programmed it to be my um, rear blind. Now, the interesting... Sorry, my iPhone's getting a bit blurry here. The interesting thing I find about the um, the... 221 is just even little things that are a little more solid than my 211 e-class for example the rear blind makes it it's very quiet and it's sort of a little more solid looking whereas my 211 one sort of just slides up and it's a bit louder whereas this is a little more uh subtle and there's even a flap at the back which when it goes down you might see it it actually folds in and covers the part where the rear blind comes out you can see it Close over like that, which is quite interesting. It's definitely a step ahead um, above the other the models. So if you guys, um, just let me wipe my camera. Off. If you guys haven't already driven or been in an S class, like this is the first S I've owned, and they're actually the first S I've driven as well. Um, you'll be quite surprised at how actually how much above the, the other models it is. Like I love my e, my two eleven E five fifty. And I loved my E63 and C63, but the S is really just on a totally different level. You'll be very surprised, at least I was. I think this car's just miles ahead of the others. Um, and and I think all the others are great as, as well. So you're really getting a great car. Now, if we just turn her off and just have the accessories going, we'll hop in the back. As you'd expect, soft closed doors. So if we hop in the car guys, it's got, um, just to show you most S classes, they have soft closed doors. So if you click the door hard enough, well not too hard, but hard enough it'll suck it back in again, as you can see. Now the long wheelbase has obviously longer doors by about 150 millimeters, I believe, about 15 centimeters. And if we hop in, as you can see here, I'm five foot 11, I think just short of six foot. Um, and there's literally like a good 20 centimeters of leg room in front of me. Um, and that's with the, the actual passenger seat relatively far back too. So if we close the door, sucks the door in. Got the bonnet up, I just put some more coolant in it. Um, it was a little bit low. As I said, I've only just sort of got the car recently. And yeah, so on the interior, Everything's leather, leather up here, wood trim, leather again, leather, and even down here we've got leather. You guys probably can't see it, the camera, iPhone camera's only brilliant to a certain degree. Obviously the full dynamic headliner. The one thing I'm still not exactly sure about is what this system here is. It looks like there's some sort of microphone in there, and I have heard on the newer S classes, um, and it could be already in this car actually, but they have like a system where the driver's voice gets projected back here 
through uh, speakers and microphones, but I might be totally wrong. It could be another speaker, but I've never heard any audio coming out of it. Um, or it could even be the motion detector. I don't I wouldn't have a bloody clue, to be honest. Anyway, you've got grab handles and you've got the nice interior lights here. Now, um, since... I've had the car running just a little bit, obviously all the ambient lights have turned off, but everything's backlit, uh, backlit. and obviously there I've got the ability to turn my own little reading light on. And as you can see there actually, it turns both of them on, and you push for one of them off and push for the other off, it's quite cool, I didn't know that, probably you guys don't know that either. You've got your little um, visors if you want to look at yourself in the mirror while you're going along. Not that I'm ever going to be in the back here. I'd like to be though, but um, yeah. And then, then we've got here, guys, the actual comfort seat uh, control system. Now, this is in a lovely uh, polished wood trim. And if you had the rear entertainment package where you've got the uh, LCD screens here, you'd have in here, I believe, the uh, DVD slot, I think. This car here has a cup holder down here. You can pop out. Um, just a warning guys, if you do buy one, just be careful. I've already had someone chip this one specifically. I'm going to order a new um, face plate for it. Um, but yeah, um, people's feet can get, like, get uh, moving around and they chip things. Like you see, I've just cracked that edge has been cracked and I've glued it back on. It doesn't look that good, so I'll buy a new part. Um, and then, yeah, I bought this one with this button here missing. So $100 later for a brand new part. Um, in New Zealand, we don't have the luxury of lots of cars wrecking, especially S-Classes. There's a dime a dozen. So, um, obviously, these sorts of parts, I just buy brand new. It was about $100 um, for the whole set, but I only needed one. So, if you're in New Zealand and you need one of these, give me a bell. I'll give it to you cheap. <laughs> anyway, so, the rear seats recline and the... Um, where, uh, where your butt sits basically this comes out so on the control panel here i've got the ability to have cooled heated seats obviously now this is more of like a ventilation rather than a cooling it's not actually cool air as such it's more just sort of blowing or circulating air through it which still obviously like a radiator will move the heat out of you for example and blow it out now i've got a few controls here i can slide this forward and it starts to slide this out back here again and then I can also push this part here and solely move the the actual leg rest out itself but it's really only one movement it's a little bit gimmicky it could really just have without that little piece there whereas in the front seat there we've got the same thing and the actual butt piece moves out very technical name for it the butt piece <laughs> slides out and um, and the actual backrest still remains intact, so you can really have it right up to the edge of your knee, so you're sort of fully supported. Now, um, if we yeah, if we look over the other side here, you can see here you've got just the standard seat. So I can also recline the back part here to a certain extent, but when you recline this, it generally also moves this part out. So it's not really just reclining this, it's also pushing this out, so it's sort of more like a lounger, it sort of starts to slope out. If you've got this in the fully retracted position, so it stops there, okay, I can actually push forward, and this will sort of bulge out. You probably can't see it in my horrible camera here, but this will actually bulge the seat, it'll push the seat forward so you're really sitting right up, right up straight. Whereas if I pull it back, I'm sort of in the standard position. I'm still relatively comfortable here. I can still sort of lean back a bit and um, just like a standard seat. But if I do want to fully recline, you can really get the car to recline or the seat to recline. Like I'm fully out reclined now and it's perfect. It's really nice. Um, that's about, as you can see, it doesn't do anything else. That's about as far as it goes. Then I can also adjust my headrest as to where I want it. So I can put it down or bring it back up and then I can actually further tilt it forward so I can sort of be reclined but also looking straight ahead. Or I could sort of go and get rid of the whole thing overall and I guess sort of put my head right back on the top of the seat here like this and I could go to sleep. I can't sleep in cars, I can't sleep in planes but you might be able to. Um, so that's quite cool and let's have a look. Do these, do these, the front seats as you can see here guys you can push these forward like you do on an aeroplane seat. I don't know if this one does it. Oh yeah, no, it does. Okay. So as you can see here, like an aeroplane, oh, that's, that's actually quite nice. 
like on an airplane seat, I can bring that right forward and it can sort of cradle my head. So if I'm sleeping, I'm not sleeping. No. <laughs> if I'm sleeping and you're going, and the driver's, the limousine driver's chasing after someone or he's got road rage, I'm not really going to sort of fall out as such. Obviously, if I put them back flat, yeah, your head sort of rolls around and you're probably going to end up like actually one of the guys who was in the car the other day with me, he was, his head was down here. So if you tilt these up nicely, then you've actually got a bit more room there, um, a bit more sort of support on your head. So that's quite cool. Uh, and, and some people have told me only the S600s have um, these luxury comfort headrests or whatever, but I think most the S500s have them anyway. But you can have a look for that when you're buying them. Now, also down here you've got a little ashtray. Not that this one really is set up for an ashtray. It's still plastic, I think. Yeah, it's still plastic. The front one, that whole actual armrest part lifts up into a storage unit. So this basically whole part here lifts up. This one doesn't. But in the front seat, you do get that feature as well. So it's got a lot of storage in it. Um, you've got your rear blind here, so I can flick that, blah, blah, blah. I'll push it, put it back up again. And also, as with most, I think pretty much every S Glass, you can control your opposite window. And in the driver's seat, you can control the passenger seat. And obviously, as I showed you guys before, I can control the passenger seat as well. So I can move it out of the way if I want to have more leg room. Now, with um, like my E-Class as well, you've got a vent on the side here and the um, B-pillar. And you've also got vents down here. This car, unfortunately, I thought it would have been, it isn't equipped with the sort of four-zone climate where you can have two, two climate controls in the back here. My uh, E550 does, and that's a Japanese uh, a JDM import. So the Japanese model had it, whereas this, I think, 400,000 New Zealand dollar S600 doesn't have a four-zone climate control. But never mind, that's all right. <clears throat> also down back here we've got um, our power outlets bear in mind this is a 2007 so it's quite old um, everything's just wrapped in lever it's real nice and yeah that's pretty much the back seat here guys it's pretty opulent you can't get much better than this I don't think everything's really well built really solid what you'd expect from a Mercedes and um, yeah I haven't been able to fault it so far I've only had passengers once um, as I said before, so I haven't had a lot of people in the car yet, but this is really where you want to be. Um, the new W222S class, I was actually wanting to buy one of those originally, but the one I was looking at sold before I could buy it, and that was only an S500, which really is all you need. But um, when this one came up, I thought, oh yeah, this is, um, I don't really like the sound of the V12 fuel consumption, but so far, it's not too bad. I'm averaging like 16, 14 to 16 litres per 100 kilometres, which is a lot in today's world, obviously. But since I've had the uh, M156 C63 with a 6.2 V8, that is probably the similar consumption to this, if not slightly better. This is definitely the worst fuel-consuming car I've owned, but only marginally over the C63. So if you guys have owned a C63 or an S63 or a uh, CLS63 with that older 6.2 legendary V8, then you sort of know what you're in for. This isn't too bad, especially when you're cruising. If you're, um, like, I've been able to get it down to like 12s and 11s, but around town, that's when it starts to get up to the 18s, 19s. Um, but it's not terrible. Someone said to me, oh, it's going to be 25 litres per 100 kilometres. And um, it's definitely not that bad. I suppose it could be if you just floored it everywhere. But this car is really not meant for that. Anyway, guys, that's just a real brief overview of the interior. And I hope that helps. And if you want to see any more about the car, just uh, send me a message and I'll make some videos. Cheers.